So let's do what we did in the last video, which is position ourselves with our wool. The other reason why I like working this way as well is because I find it much easier to control. And once you find that control, you're going to find it a lot easier. Like I say, some people might like putting their, their uh, wool around that finger and then locking it down with that finger. It can still move through, but there's a little bit more tension. So if you are somebody, if you find throughout all the videos and by the end of the book, that it doesn't matter what hook size you've gone down to, you're finding that your wool is moving too quickly for your fingers. Just add that little bit of tension there. That'll give a little bit more resistance and it'll slow your speed down if you can't shut your hands completely. So if you do have arthritis and holding your hands shut like that is just too painful for these knuckles, you're more like this, which means you're probably more open. You can add that extra tension there. Some people wrap it around their finger quite a bit here. I'm not quite comfortable with that. But then again, it's there's, like I say, something for everybody. Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so we are going to make a slip knot. Now, what I like to try and do is I like to try and make sure that my wool is in my hand when I come to do things because there is nothing worse as a beginner where you make something separately on your hand and then you have to reposition everything. For me, I think you're more likely to lose your momentum and your dexterity because you have to kind of reform and reposition. So I don't like that. So what I do is I wrap my finger, my wool around my finger like that. And you can see how I'm anchoring here. Now you'll see in the book, the booklet that I've mentioned anchoring quite a few times. And we anchor with our thumb and our middle finger. Well, I do because I don't use this finger. This is my wool finger. Okay, I'm going to take that off there because it's a little bit too tight. I take my hook under both like that. I pull that one through like so. And then I go back under that finger. And you can see how I'm moving my fingers together. Everything is anchored. Everything is controlled. And I go back through that gap. I pick up that yarn with my hook facing out. And I just pull through like so. And then I can just pull that off the hook. And that makes my slip knot. So let's just do that again. You familiarise yourself with your wool. You're happy with how it's located and how you've got your control with your tail facing towards you and the working yarn working from your little finger. Wrap your wool around your finger like so. Take your hook facing down. And you can take it between your finger there to pull it up. You pull up because you're going to lock your wool in like so. And then you're going to pull underneath. So as you can see, I'm manoeuvring from up to the side so that the flat edge moves against that wall. Because if I'd have done this all the way through, I'd have pulled on everything and I'd locked everything in. So as I lock that first loop in, I twist my hook and I go underneath that first loop that we did. I then take my hook. I go back through my fingers and I lock in another piece of yarn with my hook facing out. I then take it down and through. And then what I can do is I can take that loop off my finger while not letting go of my wool. And I can just position it like so. Okay, that's how to make a slip knot using your hook. Now, I find that much easier because, again, I'm straight into anchoring naturally. So from there to there, my tail is now anchored between my thumb and my finger, and I'm ready to go with my chain stitches. I think that's the better method. But again, as a beginner, you may find that complex. And I may be naively ignorant of the fact of how complex it is as somebody who's been doing it for a while. So the other way that I used to do it, because I love the idea of joining scouts, was I used to just take my wool, make a loop like so, hold it between those fingers, create another loop, pull it through, and then, so it'd be like that. So the loop would pull through, and then I'd hold the loop that I've pulled through, and I would just pull like so. Let me do that one again, because again, am I being naive? So create a loop, you twist it on itself like so. Take another loop. So you've got two loops like that. Take that loop through there. Hold that loop and then just pull your working yarn like so. And then you have a slip knot. 
that you can put straight onto your hook like so. And that's how to make a slip knot. So you've got two methods there. If you want to look up on YouTube some other videos, I'm sure there's loads out there that are much, maybe easier, maybe more complex. But that is the way that I do it. So I'm just showing you and I hope that it's not too complex for you to do. Just keep rewinding the video until it makes sense.